family welcome back to mend the broken on this channel we are committed to building communities where everyone sees life as a gift from god to be treasured if you are new to this channel please like share and subscribe to our videos also ring the bell beside the subscribe button so you can get notifications for each of our new videos thank you i got a question from the last video and the question is how can rape victims overcome the shame that often prevent them from talking about the incident with anyone? Let's look at it this way. Once the assault has happened to you, is it really worth keeping it to yourself and bearing the body alone? Because keeping it to yourself makes you struggle with the pain alone. And the offender might just be out there doing the same thing to other people. Remember, a closed mouth is a closed destiny. You can't receive the help that is needed without speaking up. You might even be passing the aggression to other people around you because you have not let it out. And those around you don't know exactly what is happening. So how exactly do you overcome the shame? You have to understand that you are not to blame for what has happened. The offender should be the one feeling the shame and the guilt for abusing you. You might be feeling guilty and thinking, if I have not dressed the way I did, maybe it would not happen. Or, if I have not gotten myself drunk, maybe I would not be assaulted. Or, probably I could have fought. But the truth is, no one has the right to infringe on your right, no matter what. So, once you are able to overcome this guilt, it becomes easier to share with those who can help you. Am I saying it's okay to dress indecently or get drunk? No. Because moderation earns us dignity. And our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So things must be done in moderation. Today I will continue on the subject of rape, but I won't be focusing on the victim of the rape. I'll be focusing on the families and friends surrounding the victim. So a friend or a neighbor or even a child has reported a case of rape to you how do you handle such a situation i know that can be really difficult especially when you are not a therapist but it is even more difficult for the victim to speak out about the events because of the fear of what they will be told how they will be judged or even how they will be looked down on so as someone being reported to, it's our duty to give them the assurance of love in all our expressions. How can we do this? Number one is to listen. You have to be ready to listen to the victim when they are reporting a case of an assault to you. In listening, you have to be ready to accommodate all of the victim's expression. The crying, the anger, they might even go silent on you sometimes. You have to be ready to accommodate all of that. And in listening, it gives them a kind of control because when the assault happened, they felt that control was taken away from them because they couldn't do anything to stop it. So when you listen to them, it gives them a control of their environment at that time and they are able to express themselves the way they want to. So listen. And secondly, avoid doubting the situation. Avoid being judgmental about the situation. But that time is not a time to, to doubt the victim and say, or, or, or even express that, no, you don't believe what the person is saying. Even if you don't believe, you don't show it at that particular time. What if it actually happened? So it's not a time to doubt. It's not a time to pass judgment. And number three, avoid putting the blame of the situation on the victim. If they have all the ability to, they would have stopped the assault. No one likes to be assaulted. No one likes to be a victim. So putting the blame of the situation on the victim at that time does not help the situation. Because even if the victim was at fault, Nothing can be done to reverse what has happened. It already happened. What is expected now is a way forward. So you have to assure them that they are not alone. You have to let them know that you are with them. You are ready to hear them. You are ready to stay with them 
and help them through their healing process and then encourage them to reach out to a medical or therapy resource because especially when you are a parent it can even be so difficult for you to believe what is happening or what you are being told so I know it might really be difficult for victims to want to share things with people that are not even their family members but try your best to encourage them to talk to a medical doctor so they can check for any possible aftermath of the situation or a therapist a therapist can help them in the healing process by taking them through different activities so that is one thing that will really be of help and you have to check in on the victim consistently make sure you check in on them give them calls that shows them that yes there is really someone with them and they are not alone truly and in checking in on them consistently you have to be patient patience is key to their healing they might not heal in days they might not heal in months or even sometimes years so we have to be really patient we have to be really patient with them the last thing i will talk about is confidentiality confidentiality is very key if someone has reported a case of assault to you they don't want to hear it in some other places that they have they, they've not spoken about it so when someone talks about it to you make sure you keep this as your little secret and even if you want to discuss with a third party consult the victim and make sure it is okay with them before sharing the story with someone else the second thing i'll be discussing briefly today is how we can guide against rape and sexual assault as parents you already know that these are very common events in our society and as parents as guardians we have to find a way to guide against this and how do we do this relationship we have to be able to build good relationship with our children strive to always gain their trust talk to your children about anything and everything that is necessary in doing this it is necessary to create time for them don't get carried away with work or with social events around because when we are able to gain our children's trust instead of them discussing sensitive matters with friends they are able to easily come to us to discuss such things with us and that will help us to give them the right direction also teach them to avoid being negligent and living a carefree life the bible says train a child in the way he should go and when he grows up he will not depart from it you have to encourage them to be aware of their surroundings because when they are aware of their surroundings they will be able to know what extent they should go with friends what they should do and what they should not do and also we have to be sensitive to every signs eating and open communications and languages that our children use to communicate things to us we have to make sure we don't cut them off at every point in time there are times we might even be busy with work there are times we might be so stressed up and they really want to express themselves to us be ready to listen to them because at that point when we don't listen to them they tend to just go and discuss it with someone else and who knows what the advice they will get from an outsider so as parents building a very good relationship with our children goes a very long way i know that we will, have, we will definitely have time to talk about this at some other time on this channel building good relationship with our with our children because this is very important in building our community and making it a place of beauty for everyone around us just before i go today i want to remind you that nothing is impossible with god everything is possible with him don't allow your past or your pain to stop you remember your strength must be revived again for a better today and a glorious tomorrow thank you again for watching god bless you and i will see you in the next video